Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Blair, and I have the honor and pleasure of serving as Dean of the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts here at Duquesne University. Um, it's also my pleasure to spend time today with Amanda Lynn Davis. Amanda Lynn is a graduating, graduating senior in the college with majors in international security studies and international relations with minors in political science and philosophy. I've had um, the distinct honor of knowing Amanda Lynn for several years now um, based on her role as one of our most talented, accomplished liberal arts student ambassadors, as well as to her major leadership role on campus as um, the director of first year orientation for this year's entering class. So welcome, Amanda Lynn. Um, I'm going to first start by asking you to tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you arrive at Duquesne University? Well, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to spend some time with you. Um, so coming to Duquesne University was such like a no nonsense situation for me. I was like, yes, that, that's what I want. Um, I'm originally from Decatur, Illinois, so about three hours south of Chicago, right in a cornfield. So coming to a big city was a little daunting, but it was something I felt so drawn to. Um, I have family out here on the East Coast. I was like, why not check that out? Why not take that approach? And I was looking for political science programs. At the time, it was more of like a broad interest. I was like, I really do enjoy this subject. Like, let me try to engage with it more. Um, and whenever I toured Duquesne, it felt like home instantly. And that was just something I'd never experienced before. Um, it was a pure bonus that the political science department here is absolutely spectacular. Um, I was like, this is home. This is where I want to be. And I knew I just had to do anything possible to get here. Um, and I've loved every minute since. It's just every day is a new journey of why I love this place even more. Well, that's so wonderful to hear. You made this shift slightly from political science to international security studies. What facilitated that transition? So that was a mega transition for me. <laughs> um, I started out as a team leader here. Um, and when I was a team leader, I met some students and it was my, my first time really engaging with the community. Um, and he was like, I think you're going to really love international relations. So just based on the classes that you're talking about having enjoyed, I think that's the route you're going to end up taking. Like you're just going to fall in love with it more. Um, and he was right. That classmate was beyond correct. Um, and one day as a student ambassador, I was introduced to Father Sawicki here on campus. Um, and he is the director for the Center of International Relations. And he just asked me why I was interested. And I gave him a couple like quick topics that I was interested in studying. He said, so why don't you? Like, and I was like, such a, I was like, what? OK, that's a great question. So simple, but why am I not? He said, come to my office tomorrow, um, and we can have a chat. And so I did. And I left that day <laughs> as an international mm -hmm. relations major. Um, and from there, I just absolutely fell in love with it and security studies overall. But it was truly a community built passion where I was like, I love politics. I love talking about it. Um, but I wanted to get a little bit more specific. I found I love the international sphere a lot more than just the domestic sphere. Mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't my wheelhouse. But being able to engage with the globe was just something so spectacular to me. And I've not regretted it since. It's been the best journey so far. Thank you. You know, one of the reasons I asked that question is, as a dean, I'm always very interested in how um, students find their way um, along their along their journey. In your case, I'm equally interested because I know you had the opportunity recently to travel abroad to um, Tanzania. So I'd love for you to share with us um, why you decided to be part of that project, um, how it evolved, what types of activities you did there, and and, and why it was so special. Wow. I mean, you're so right. That trip was beyond special. <laughs> <laughs> that was a life-changing moment for me. Um, so as you said at the beginning, I was a director for orientation. And um, I was working with the dean of students here, uh, Dr. Adam Osoko. And he knew I had a passion for human rights. Like, that was just something that drew me in intensely, especially in international security. Um, and he brought up this opportunity. He had mentioned it um, in passing over text one day, saying, would you be interested in going to Arusha, Tanzania? And of course, the name stuck out because um, if you're unaware, Arusha was where the Rwandan genocide uh, mm -hmm. war trials were held. Yes. Um, and so I was like, wow, I was like, that's a mega opportunity right there. Um, but he 
planned that trip about, I believe it was three years ago, and they were going each year before COVID um, because we have such strong connections to Tanzania here mm -hmm. through the Spiritan Mission. Um, he's like, you love the Spiritan Mission here. You work with the Spiritans. Um, you love human rights. Like This would be an opportunity for you. And I was like, absolutely. Um, and so I chatted with you about the trip, and I was just getting so excited, and I was just so thankful that Liberal Arts supported me on that journey. Um, we went to Arusha, Tanzania, which is right up in the north, borders Kenya, um, and it's right at the base of Mount Kilimanjaro. And we went there towards so many different facilities, um, really engaged with the culture. And I think it's just so special because as an international security major, I mean, it's in the name, international. Like, mm. you want to be able to get abroad and see how people are living and engage with them individually. And that was just an opportunity of a lifetime that I could have never, ever imagined, and I'm so grateful for it. That's great. I'm so delighted that you had that opportunity. So I want to follow up on your um, commentary about um, the Spiritan mission. Um, after you came back, how did it enhance your understanding of Duquesne's Catholic Spiritan mission? What what changed for you in relation to, to that? Absolutely. So Whenever, like before we left, I was so involved with the Spiritan Mission. Um, I wasn't working in mission animation like I am now, but I knew I loved it. Um, mm -hmm. There was just something that I felt connected to, that sense of meeting people where they are and walking alongside them. And I tried to keep that in my mm -hmm. mind throughout the entirety of my trip in Arusha. Um, and getting to walk alongside these people and actually put that into practice uh, was really eye-opening because we visited a school called Tengeru. It's a secondary boys' school. Um, right outside of Arusha. And I was sitting there looking at this chemistry lab. And I'm not in chemistry, I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. But I was looking at it and my heart just bursted with joy because the last time that we had gone, um, we had fundraised to give them money to prop mm -hmm. up a chemistry lab. And it was there. I was like, this is because That's of so our connection. Like, we connected with them and we were able to provide for them and share the Duquesne education. So whenever I came back, I was just walking around campus thinking, the reach that Duquesne and the Spiritans have is so wide and so immense, um, but it goes without saying. I mean, they don't ask for any credit. The Spiritans just serve. They just serve others and for the goodness of others. And that was just so beautiful and I'm privileged to have one of my primary professors that I have so many classes with be a spirit and Father Sawicki. Um, and I'm just grateful. I can feel that spirit and energy every day in class, even if we're not talking about um, faith-based anything. Um, it's, just, it's just how they approach life. And to see that and see that in practice and how they embrace other cultures so beautifully. It's just, mind-boggling <laughs> so so well said and and I agree completely um, there's something about Duquesne spirit and mission that's very palpable um, on on our campus and in our classrooms um, with regard to both curriculum and and pedagogy so so speaking of that classroom and academic aspect um, how do you feel the experience has made you um, a stronger um, international security studies major um, IR major Major, um, how has it really contributed to where you see yourself going um, after after graduation? For sure. So um, before going on the trip to Tanzania, I was dead set on going into counterterrorism. That was something I felt so beyond passionately about, and it's what drew me to international security in the first place. That was a primary topic I studied. Um, and whenever I went to Arusha, I wasn't 100% sure of anything at that point per se. I was trying to go in with the most open mind possible. Like I wasn't trying to directly apply it to my academics immediately. I wanted to see where it led my spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever I got there, there was a school that we had visited again. It was Tengeru. Um, like I said, it's a boys school. And I remember looking across the classroom and as we were being introduced to some of the students, there was one girl and we just locked eyes and it was just such a beautiful moment where I was like, wait, like you're here, like you are trailblazing right now. Like you are sitting in this classroom and you are learning. And that felt so impactful to me. And I can't, it's really hard to put to words and articulate like how that felt, but I felt such a drive to come back and study more. Mm -hmm. I was like, she's doing it, I can do it. We're all doing this. And that's part of like that spirit and mission is just really trying to enhance education. 
And I'm a big believer in a famous quote um, by John Locke, the best defense against the world is a thorough knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. And in what I study in international security, I think the more I know people, the people that I'm trying to protect, the better I can protect them. Um, and that trip just absolutely blew that passion up. Mm -hmm. Where it's, I want to help them succeed. I want to help them feel secure and live a happy life. Because I've been privileged enough to have that. Um, and not everyone is, but I want to be able to continue spreading that and seeing how Duquesne has contributed to that and Duquesne having afforded me the opportunity to even go and witness other cultures. Um, I want to pass it on and through that I decided I just wanted to continue learning. I don't want a day to go by where I don't learn something new. Your your response just really attests to the wonderful role you play as um, a global citizen and um, a student ambassador, and and the importance of um, international opportunities and study abroad. Sometimes, though, when I interact with students, they're a little nervous about um, you know going going overseas um, in, in any capacity. And so, um, what advice would you give to students who um, might be an assist for me? Is this something I should do? Um, you know, what, what can you share with them to um, encourage as much involvement as you've had? That's a really good question. Um, and I definitely want to make it very clear. Uh, I was very nervous at one point, and it was whenever we were on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was so excited up until the point. Like, we all got together the night before the flights, and I was like, yes. But as soon as I got on the plane, I was like, hold on. These things don't just like turn around. Mm. I was like, this is real. You're going. I, yeah, I'm yeah. going. Like, I'm, whenever this plane lands, I'm not going to be in the United States anymore. Um, and it was my first time ever going abroad. So my first oh, time amazing. setting That's foot amazing. abroad was in Tanzania. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, this is a lot. Um, but I kept telling myself on the plane whenever I was getting nervous, I was like, there's a reason why you're doing this. Um, there's a reason. And you picked this for a reason. And it's because you have a passion for it. I knew I had a passion for it, so the nerves became null at that point. The nerves, again, once turned to excitement and curiosity. And I think it's okay to be nervous whenever you're looking to go abroad. You know, remain vigilant in that sense, but don't let it hold you back. Um, whenever you're getting nervous, think about why you're nervous. Is mm -hmm. it because you're leaving something that's comfortable, that's familiar? If that's the case, push it out of mind because you're only going to learn the most if you leave that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And I've never been abroad. I've never been west of the Mississippi. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I'm getting into. Um, but that widened my horizons to no end. And I can only continue expanding from there. And I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice in academia if you didn't challenge yourself in those senses, where a test might be hard, but um, challenging your personal internal psyche in the sense of mm -hmm. I'm going to put myself in a situation that I can't even hold to any kind of comparison. I had no frame of reference for Tanzania. I knew nothing about what it would be like, um, but that was what made it so fun to learn about. I, was like, I don't know what to expect. Um, and I think it's the spirit and mission girl in me of let's live open to the spirit. You know, you're being afforded these opportunities. Not You wouldn't be afforded if you weren't ready. You know, um, doors don't open for someone that's not meant to walk through them. And I think it's sometimes hard to take that first step, but engage with people like you, Dean Blair. That would be my recommendation. They support you every step of the way, and I never once felt alone. Um, even if I was freaking out on that plane, <laughs> I had someone next to me, and that matters. It does, and, and thank you for your, your kind remarks. It was a pleasure to um, support you. And you know, I think that you're so right um, in that if students come to university and um, we don't, through um, our educational and spiritual processes, engage in some type of transformational change, um, you know, academically, professionally, spiritually, we, we really haven't done our job. So it's truly, um, again, a pleasure to, to hear how these experiences have, in, have transformed you. With that said, um, I just want to ask, what's, what's next for you? You're graduating. <laughs> uh, what's the next step on your journey? So, I mean, it's, it's that time with grad school. Um, you're very familiar with it, of course. Um, I was searching for grad school programs that I really wanted to go to. I knew I wanted to continue on with education um, and higher education and pursue a master's degree. Um, 
I knew I was looking for something in security studies once more. I wanted to continue on with that. And like I said earlier, I had a strong passion in counterterrorism. Um, I was thinking, how can I best serve in like, that field and protect people? And the thing that I love doing the most is research and um, analyzing content. So I love going through articles and reading through them. And I found a passion for the intelligence field. So I was looking for programs that anything that said security or intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Keywords. Yeah, I was looking for those day and night. Um, and I came across a program at the Institute of World Politics. And it's a Master's of Arts in Strategic Intelligence. And um, I applied there. And fortunately, I got in last week. So very timely that this question is being asked. Um, and I'll be going there next fall. So I'll graduate in May. And I'll be beginning my master's program uh, this time next year, which is kind of crazy to think. But I'll be pursuing that degree in strategic intelligence and hopefully going into a field that will allow me to analyze intelligence ahead of time to best protect people and best understand people and learn about them so I can best serve them. That's just amazing because I'm learning about this literally <laughs> on camera and as someone who wrote a letter for you and has been such a big fan of, of your advancement, I'm just truly so happy for and, and proud of you. Congratulations, you so um, Amanda Lynn. And I just want to say uh, thank you again for spending time with me this morning um, to um, share, share your journey thus far as um, a Duquesne undergraduate in the McAnulty College and Graduate School of Liberal Arts. Um, we have been so um, honored to be part of your journey. So thank, thank, you. thank you again. <sighs> thank you. I, I knew I'd start crying a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Me um, too. It's a lot. It Me means too. A lot. And I'm just endlessly grateful for your support. It's oh. hard to articulate, but I'm beyond grateful. I so appreciated the opportunity to have this conversation thank with you. Thank you for you. having Thanks. Me. Thanks again.